because they weren't up the code for whatever reason, yeah, there were, there, there's or architectural plans that didn't pan out. Any kind of money that was wasted, I would like a total number. Now, Gloria, earlier in the meeting, you mentioned about volunteers and, and doing a background check on people volunteering to assist our children, our students. Is it true, according to an article on triplive.com, there is a teacher within our school district who was arrested for assault, sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, open lewdness, obscene gestures in a sexual nature. Is any of that true in that article? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You mind if I speak And it's to not you? a personal attack, it's a question. Uh, Do you mind if I speak to it, Mrs. You, Dr. McGowan, you are more than welcome to uh, speak. I'll speak and share with you exactly what happened. I appreciate your question, because the safety of our students is very, very important. Okay, so you can sit down and if you don't mind. Thank you. <coughs> 12, maybe 13 years ago, someone accused me of something I did not do. While the allegations were not true, I defended myself, as any of us would, with an attorney. Naturally, the charges were dismissed. I record, expunged, so there's no record. Or I wouldn't be here. I think we all know that. It's terrible. You can't imagine being accused of something you didn't do. And what's really scary is it can happen to all of us in here. That's what's scary. I didn't anticipate back then, years ago, that the internet would make the incident permanent after all the charges were dismissed and expunged. I can tell you that I'm thankful every day that I work in education. I'm the son of two teachers. I've never faltered in my request to become a public educator. Ever. I can tell you, I always knew I wanted to be an educator. While fighting to prove my innocence, I tried to imagine doing something else. And I could not. I was blessed with some support from the education world, my family, students, friends, my wife, five months in middle school, and from God. It is why, today, I truly find it wonderful to wake up every day and come to work in Lehighton. In closing, I want to say that I appreciate the support, support of the school board, Mr. Cleaver, Mr. Tack, the administration, my staff, our students, and their families. I'm proud to serve as the middle school principal. So my goal is to inspire my staff and to help inspire the dreams of students become whatever they want to be, whatever their desire is, despite any obstacles that might stand in their way. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your question. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. McGowan. You're welcome. If it's all in fact true, then I uh, apologize for any, anything that I've done or, or uh, talked about. It is true, OK? Um, we all know that when we do things wrong, there are ways to get out of doing of clearing the record. So of course we're going to be skeptical. And another question that a lot of people again have asked me is, why have we hired somebody from out of our school district? Why did we not stay locally? Because the odds are if somebody would have done anything like that, like the accusations are made, we would certainly know about it within our community. Or we would have a lot, a lot higher likelihood of knowing about it. So we're all curious as to why we're doing this hiring outside of our community. There are plenty of applicants. The goal, for sure hiring plenty is get, the goal for hiring is to get to who we feel is the most applicable, the most qualified for that. That may not come from right here in this area, and I'm sorry you don't you know, see that, but the goal is during our interview process is to find the most qualified individual for the job. And it's not, not anything local. So my understanding